And so I'm not sure about you, but the season of autumn has a way of inviting reflection and contemplation in my life. And let me be honest, my my initial response to the fall season is one of dread and sadness. I'll miss those long, sunny days, the warmth, the wildlife and greenery. But once I get past that initial gloom, it's an appropriate time to take on perspective with all that is going on. And so one recent reflection, I've been thinking about how it's interesting for us as children. We always just assumed life as was presented to us was always how life has been and will be forever. Take, for instance, your childhood neighborhood and street. So think about that street in your your mind's eye here. My friends and I spent a lot of time on that street, riding bikes back and forth, playing street football and baseball, running from one friend's house to another, even playing hide-and-seek at night. We knew our neighbors, the grumpy ones we should avoid, and which neighbors were friendly. We knew the houses, the yards with the pools, even the traffic patterns. We had this world figured out at this point. And then one day, years later, as an adult, I remember visiting that same street where I spent so much time as a child and recounting how different it looked all of a sudden. The street was so much smaller than I previously remembered. The homes that once seemed to be large and immaculate now seemed much closer together, modest, showing signs of age. Neighbors, I remember, helping Uh, happily sitting on their front porches, had disappeared altogether, replaced with new, unfamiliar faces and families who had since moved in. Many of my childhood friends, like me, had moved on in life. And so today I think more often about how things have changed in this world and continue to change rather than seemingly stay the same as they, the perceived days of our childhoods, much to our chagrin. I'll admit sometimes I don't like change too much. Sometimes those feelings of sadness and dread well, they find their way back into my thoughts and emotions. And it's in those moments, those thought patterns, when I know I need to go outside for a walk. (laughs) And so I walk amongst the beautiful fall weather we've been having. And I walk along the neighborhood streets, different streets than from where I grew up as a child. And I look up at those awe-inspiring trees that are now changing color before our very eyes, peacefully dropping their leaves as they Likewise, experience transition of life's seasons and change. And maybe this is a a big leap, but 
It's during such walks where I'm admiring the beauty of the changing leaves that I'm reminded of how impermanent this world is. How temporary our lives truly are. In the vastness of the cosmos, life continues to change, to evolve, to relentlessly move forward, just like the days of our childhood, just like the seasons, just like the trees. And here we have two perspectives when confronting such impermanence as we learn from these changing leaves. One, we can choose to focus on the loss of those leaves, the the pending cold, the growing darkness of the days, and, and we can lament the change. Or two, we can also choose to acknowledge the impermanence in our lives, in all of life, and in accepting this reality, simply enjoy the present beauty of the fall colors for what they are, temporary and sacred, as all things are. I don't know. You buy it? Maybe I should just stop thinking too much and just enjoy some fall colors. (laughs) So today we continue on with our series on rejoicing in the resurrected Christ, even amongst a broken suffering world. And today I'd like to focus on this perspective taking that the Apostle Paul embraces within his reflections on his life as it relates to this gospel message. Now Paul knew a thing or two about change and impermanence. He also experienced a change in perspective following his encounter with the risen Christ, which changed the entire trajectory of his life. And so let's get back to this letter from Paul to the Philippians once again as as we're inviting today to acknowledge the impermanence of this world and also the beauty of God's kingdom work among us today. So we're reading again from this third chapter in Paul's letter to the Philippians as as Paul now further develops his theme of rejoicing in the risen Christ. And we remember just previously in chapter 2, we recount Paul's description of Jesus as the Christ found in the, the words of an attributed hymn celebrating the humility found in Jesus as we are likewise invited to rejoice in such humility. And here in this chapter 3, Paul takes on a larger perspective through the lens of what he describes as gains, loss, and ultimately of faith. Paul recounts his upbringing and stature in society, his his gains. He he recounts his education, his, his profession, his privilege. All of his accomplishments in his life up to that point were exactly what he had hoped for until he encountered Christ. We pick up in verse 7, Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For Paul, the use of the word loss is not necessarily as a bad thing in the way that you or might or I might initially understand the word. No, there is a, a depth to this revelation to, for, for Paul. Within, within this word of loss comes a, a newfound freedom, a liberation. And for Paul, this freedom is found in the risen Christ. 
Paul's encounter of Jesus changed his perspective on everything. For his sake, Paul writes, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Paul's entire worldview has, has seemingly been turned upside down with this revelation. No longer does he uh, aspire for those accomplishments of the world or, or the flesh, as he puts it. No, in Paul's encounter of the risen Christ, a new reorientation has emerged. The key to the joy in which he espouses is not about what we gain in this world, what we can accomplish or take on. No, true joy in Christ Jesus is found in our willingness to lose ourselves in Christ, to empty our lives of our short-sighted ambitions, our goals, our egos, and to instead be filled with God's eternal presence, vessels of the holy living not in flesh, but in faith. Paul continues in verse 12, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to lay hold of that for which Christ has laid hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider what I have laid hold of it but one thing I have laid hold of, forgetting what lies behind and straining for to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal, toward the prize, the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. And friends, this is the same spirit which inspired the reformers from over 500 years ago. And from this, this is our good news this morning. As we reflect on the beauty of the changing leaves, as we reflect on this rapidly changing world, as we reflect on our Reformation roots as a church, we hear such good news that true joy is not found in temporary gains of this world, but in the emptying of ourselves so that we may be filled with the eternal love and grace of God in Jesus Christ. This is not an instantaneous response. There is daily work to be done. There is a, a lifetime endeavor, with, which is part of this following of Jesus. Each day we are invited to take inventory of our lives, to acknowledge the gifts that we have been given, and to be grateful for such blessings. And then we as followers of Jesus are invited to also acknowledge the impermanence within such worldly gifts. Daily emotions will come and go. Jobs, even careers, will come and go. Cherished material possessions will, well, they'll come and go. Even loving relationships come and go in this world. And yes, churches will come and go. 
Today as we celebrate our Reformation Sunday, we're reminded that even Christ's church is called to daily reformation and transformation as we seek to be faithful followers of Jesus. And sometimes those are small, temporary changes. Other times they are seismic shifts that will impact the future of denominations and congregations. In all of these, we are reminded of the impermanence of our time on this earth and the eternal beauty of God's kingdom work at hand. We as followers of the risen Christ are being called to live not in the flesh of this world, but to live in faith, daily learning to rely not on our own abilities, but that of Christ Jesus, to empty ourselves of our earthly attachments so that our hearts may be filled with heavenly treasure every day, being called to rejoice in the knowledge that even in the midst of a changing world, we press on toward the goal, toward the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. And so we are left to reflect once more, friends. What can it look like for the members of First Presbyterian Church to rejoice in the knowledge of the impermanence of this world as each of us is invited to walk in faith with the good news of the risen Christ within our ministry and our mission. As we recount the, the spirit of the Reformation with the principles of sola fide, which means by faith alone, or sola gratia, by grace alone, how might God be calling us to continue to be reformed in Christ's image? As we walk among those falling leaves, and reflect on our own lives, past, present, and future, how might we embrace the beauty that is God's eternal presence in our lives? With such reflections and ponderings, a natural response is that of worship and praise we say thanks be to God who in the name of Jesus Christ calls us ever forward in faith who calls us to the kingdom work at hand who calls us to rejoice yes rejoice alleluia amen